every Marine is a rifleman. That's what they teach us, and that's what we learn. The Marines are definitely the subject matter experts on our particular weapon systems, and that's what they bring to the fight. My military occupation is an armor, 2100. I take care of all the small arms weapons, M16s, A2s, A4s, 9 millimeters, saws, 50 cals, all the all the 13 different type of weapon systems the Marine Corps has. Uh, M240 Bravo. It's a medium machine gun, fires 762. Cyclic rate, which is just holding down the trigger. Yeah, it's between 650 and 900 rounds a minute. Basically, if you want, you can put down a wall of lead. We are the ultimate support. The battlefield is a uh, dance floor, and uh, machine gunners are the jukebox. As 11s, you know, the basic infantrymen, as they move up, we keep the heads down of everybody that's shooting at them. This is the M4 carbine. And it fires 556 five, NATO round. It doesn't matter where you are in the Marine Corps, everyone knows how to shoot this weapon effectively up to 500 yards. This is a uh, Mar 19, the 40 millimeter automatic grenade launcher. It's a great, great support asset to have with you no matter where you go. The uh, M110 SAS is a semi automatic weapon system. It's for mainly multiple target engagement. The uh, M40A5 is our traditional weapon, it's a bolt gun. It's mainly for precision and accuracy when it's really needed. This is a Browning M2 50 caliber machine gun. It's an awesome weapon system. And you can go just about anywhere with this heavy machine gun, do whatever you need to do. Standard issue M9 Beretta pistol. Just clear, no rounds. As the standard issue pistol for the Marine Corps, everybody that rates a pistol does get one of these. It is a 9mm, receives 15 round magazine, and it fires semi automatic. I'm a mortarman. Uh, mortar is a high angle fire weapon. Basically, we were able to reach out and touch people from far away. Fire! This is a M40A1 Sabre anti tank missile system. We can hit targets moving laterally at 45 to 50 miles an hour in front of us at about 3,500 meters and uh, have about 95% hit ratio every time. Using a lot of conventional artillery a lot of area fire weapons. We can now engage from a further distance with precision guidance. We may not show up with the, uh, the biggest weapon system, the largest piece of armor, but you don't have to. You just need to know how to use the tools that you have. Aviation exists for one reason and one reason only, and that is for the Marine carrying that M16 uh, on the ground. We are there to support that Marine. The six functions of, of Marine aviation are anti-air warfare, offensive air support, assault support, electronic warfare, command and control, and aerial reconnaissance. And those six functions only exist to support our brothers on the ground. The different aircraft within the Marine Corps are fixed wing and rotor wing. Among the fixed wing are F-18s, C-130s, Prowlers. Rotary wing consists of Hueys and Cobras, Ospreys, just to name a few. There's a tendency for pilots to fall in love with whatever machine they, they get uh, selected for. When people ask what the best aircraft is in the Marine Corps, of course, it's always going to be the Huey, because that's the one I fly. What I like about the Huey is its versatility. No matter if it's resupplying the troops on the ground, inserting and extracting patrols, we can mount a variety of weapons on our aircraft, uh, four different types. So we can shoot a 240, we can shoot two varieties of 50 cal, and then we can shoot a GAL 17, which is basically a minigun that shoots 7.62 at about 3,000 rounds a minute. The CH-53 is the uh, MAGTAF commander's heavy assault support asset. We uh, bring the heavy equipment from ship to shore as well as uh, Marines. Typically armed with two 50 caliber machine guns in the left and right window as well as we're capable of putting an additional 50 cal on the, the ramp for cover to the rear of the aircraft. We're the only close air support or attack rotor wing aircraft in the Marine Corps. I've been flying Cobras for eight years and I learn something new every day. A new tactic, a new technique, a different way to solve a problem.
The Harrier is what's called a jump jet. It can go from perfect flight to a 90 degree hover within a few seconds. The Harrier is unique in that our number one mission is close air support. We have the ability to drop our ordnance, drop our bombs very close proximity to where we want them to be. V-22 retains the capability of helicopters, but then uh, brings with it capabilities that normally a turboprop airplane have, like flying at higher altitudes and flying at higher air speeds. If you're the crew chief, you're really in charge of the aircraft. We have to know all of the systems of the aircraft, how to fix them if something goes wrong, how to troubleshoot in the air. So we're a big help to the pilots with that. When we're deployed, we do a lot of troop transportation, cargo transportation. We also have the GAL-16 and GAL-17 on the ramp in case we need to defend ourselves. The great thing about the KC-130 is the versatility that it provides. It's got short field takeoff and landing capabilities. Fly slow enough that we can refuel helicopters. The air delivery capabilities are exceptional. This is the FA-18 aircraft Delta model, which means it's a two-seater. It's got a uh, pilot and a backseater. The backseater is the weapons guy. We uh, load the ordnance up. We got the, the fuelers fueling. We got PCs getting the jet started. Pilots taking off and Basically, you have that small window with aircraft landing, loading them up, and they're taking them right back off, and it's just that fast. It's amazing some of the things that these Marines can do. We entrust them with multi-million dollar aircraft. I mean, that's not something that the average 18 to 20 year old out there gets to do. You know, the pilots depend on them. We're in charge of making sure this aircraft is up and running at all times. Everything ties into us. It's my job to make sure the bird is gonna fly. Everything that we preach is attention to detail every single day because one minor slip up could be a major mishap for the crew, for the pilots, and for the aircraft all together. It's all part of a big picture. I fix the helicopter, the helicopter goes out and completes the mission. That to me is the most important. Every time we launch aircraft in support of anybody that's out there in the desert or anywhere else in the world, I mean, it, it, it's a feeling that I can't really explain, you know? Um, it's amazing. When you're doing a ground fight, your best friend is somebody up there flying above you. They can see a lot of things a lot farther and get there faster than we can. When I see a helo go over, I'm like, that's ours, that's a good day. ship to shore from inland to objective, we'll take the Marine infantry wherever they need to go. We'll cover them wherever they need to go. And that's what we do. This uh, behind me, it's a uh, six by chem wrap. It holds seven in the back, two in the front, and you can also put a gunner up in the turret. These vehicles make significant impact on the Marines in country. The ability for them to go over certain terrain, the heavy armor that's put on it, the things happen, they're still OK. The vehicle behind me, that's a Mat V. Uh, it's part of the MRAP family, which stands for Mine Resistant Ambush Protected. They're very important. They bring speed, mobility, and firepower to the fight. They can go a lot of places that other armored vehicles, tracked vehicles like tanks and stuff like that can't go. An LAV-25, which is what we ride on, it has a 25 millimeter main gun on it, a Squishmaster chain gun. It shoots up to 200 rounds a minute. We have two different types of rounds that we shoot, armor piercing and high explosive rounds. The tank is the tip of the spear. We keep the tanks running and keep them up in, uh, in the front of the fight. It's an M1A1 main bound tank. The tank has one uh, main gun, which is a 120 mic mic round. It also has a 50 cal machine gun, as well as a coaxial machine gun, which is also another 50 cal. It's going to take a lot to stop it. The ABVs are out here as a breaching device, a breaching vehicle, to reduce a anti-tank ditch or a obstacle berm so that follow-on forces can get through and complete the mission. The AAV is a proven vehicle. What an AAV does is it enables the MU and the United States to project its power forward no matter what the obstacles. We can take a beach under enemy fire. We can move 10,000 pounds of equipment per vehicle, humanitarian supplies to a shore that might otherwise be unreachable. We've got trams, which is a big front-end motor. We've got the MCT, medium crawler tracker, that's a bulldozer. We're also using MTLs, which is a multi-terrain motor. This right here is by far one of my favorite pieces of gear in the Marine Corps. It's called the Kalmar. It's used mostly for material handling, or lifting ISO containers. Well, this is my record. It's an AMK-36. It's used for towing all types of vehicles. This truck can do it all, basically. We roll around with a mechanic everywhere we go, so we can fix trucks, tow trucks, and whatever needs to get done, we can get done. This is the LVSR. 
thing that's unique about this vehicle is the engine is on the back of it and not the front. These joysticks right here allow me to take this flat rack right here and put it flat on the ground so that other Marines can unload it without having to use any other equipment. The less Marines on the ground, the better. So as long as we can do it with a vehicle, but keeping those Marines protected behind armor, it's much safer for the Marines and let the vehicle do its job. Training. First to move toward the sounds of tyranny. In